Hey folks, Alcris here with another what to think about when founding your capital city special bonus edition video. This time we're looking at pick later. This was a suggestion of a Redditor, uh, TEWK1471. Uh, thanks for that suggestion. And here's a video. We're going to look at a bunch of starting sites and then try to evaluate what nations and what families we might want to found in those situations. So let's get to it. All right. First, some preamble about the relative strength of nations. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through and talk about which nations I personally like to play. Keep in mind, this is biased from my perspective. I largely play multiplayer, largely in cloud games, which play a turn, you send it back for the cloud, it comes back in a day or two, uh, and you sort of have a lot of time to thoughtfully think about every turn, maybe take five or 10 minutes um, a turn uh, later on, early turns are probably like a minute or two. I posted some cloud narrated cloud game playthroughs on my channel. Um, so that I'm looking at through the bias of that, and particularly for multiplayer. Uh, multiplayer, you can't. The big difference with multiplayer old world is unlike in single player, where you can bribe the AI to be your friend and give them gifts um, until pretty late in the game, when ruthless AI will come after you because they're like, "Well, you're about to win, so <laughs> attack, attack you." Uh, you can't really do that in multiplayer. Um, people will make diplomacy with you. Uh, they'll backstab you. <laughs> you can backstab them. Um, generally. Speaking softly and carrying a big stick is a great strategy in multiplayer. People will not attack you if you are stronger and have more units than them. What does that mean? That means that training is super, super important, uh, specifically city-based training, so you can build a lot of units. This is why I made my training video a while ago, just because I that was me trying to understand, like, oh my lord, how important training is in old world. Um, yeah, so all these sort of civil civilization or nation ratings are what I enjoy playing and what situations I would look to play uh, should be viewed through that lens of multiplayer. You can certainly play any civilization, uh, any nation, and have a great time in single player. You don't need to min-max to that degree. Uh, even on the great, um, you, you can basically, like, you can play any nation and, and do a great time just because you have that diplomatic control with the AI uh, where you can basically bribe them to not attack you. You can bribe them to attack each other. Um, and, and you you choose when you attack. And that's so incredibly powerful in single player. You don't have that luxury of choosing when you attack in multiplayer, uh, which means you might get ambushed. You might have a naval invasion. Um, all those things might happen. Uh, and and there's no, that's why I love multiplayer so much, because I think it's really, really fun. And I should note, if you are looking for multiplayer games, uh, the Old World Discord has an organizing games channel where you can find folks to play network games, which are live, very, very hectic, very, very fun, but very hectic, because uh, you only have a, a couple minutes to make each turn, and that gets really crazy once combat gets started, as well as cloud games there. So I'd, I'd recommend checking the organizing games channel on the Old World Discord. There's a link in the description of this video to the Old World Discord if you're interested in playing multiplayer. Really recommend it. I think uh, cloud games in particular, I think are the, are the cloud multiplayer games, I think are the best way to play Old World. Probably just start with some one-on-one -on -one duels, get a feel for it. It's a little different game, because uh, unlike in single player, you don't start behind your opponents. Uh, you start on even equal footing. There's there's no advanced nations that have a lot more cities or a lot more units. Um, I personally find that a lot more fun, and it's just how can I use my map uh, and what the map gives me to win. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's talk about nations. Again, viewing through the lens of multiplayer. That's the lens I know best. Uh, single player, I think you could play any, any nation have a great time. Multiplayer, uh, you kind of need to optimize a bit. Assyria. Assyria is pretty solid, but I think suffers from their unique unit. Their unique unit is the battering ram, which basically blasts down cities. The problem with this is, to me, at least it feels like a win more card, and it's you'll notice it has one move. <laughs> it can move one per order. This is incredibly slow. It's great once it gets in range of a city. But it is unless you have a great sort of water coastal transportation network or an amazing road network, siege units like the the battering ram and the siege tower do get twice the moves on on roads, which helps. Unless you have that set up, it, it's going to be really hard to use. And of course, if you do have that set up, the other units you have will be even faster. They can move on the roads too, and they can use coastal unit coastal movement as well. Um, Assyria does have some of the nicest shrines in the game, I think. Great starting techs. Uh, each of their units gets focus one, which is really, really incredible, um, especially as you can get to focus two and additional levels of focus. The pillage yield, I don't find particularly useful. Uh, the two orders per military unit can snowball really, really nicely, especially if you get a great route chain. The route chain can sort of become self-sustaining. The chariot kills and then kills another unit, and you keep getting more and more orders. 
really, really fun. Uh, good selections of families, particularly for champions, hunters, two military families, uh, patrons as well, uh, clerics. I, I'm not too much of a fan of clerics, but th those three families are all really quite good. Um, Syria, very, very playable. Um, I, I think just the, the focus one is really, really nice. The military units were killed as well. Just the unique unit, I think, is a shortcoming right now for Assyria, so I'll keep that in mind. Next, let's take a look at Babylon. Babylon is pretty good. They've got a good selection of families with hunters, artisans, and sages, um, as well as traders. Um, their unique unit is one of the strongest unique units in the game. The Sumerian archer has splash. It's basically like a walking onager that doesn't need to unload. The downside, of course, is it does suffer from ranged fall off, uh, unlike onagers, which do not. But if you get the uh, eagle eye and then marksman eagle eye promotion, you don't have uh, ranged fall off. We can look at what that promotion is quickly here. Eagle eye promotion. Ignore the distance modifier that ranged units normally have, um, which is a minus 20 attack per tile of distance to the target. And then if you get marksman, that gives them an extra range, uh, making them truly terrifying because you have these four, <laughs> four range walking platforms. Um, and if you produce from the hunter family and they're in range of your territory, they have um, 20 additional strength, 20% additional strength from being from the sentinel promotion. Um, so very, very, very terrifying unit. Oh, like getting a bunch of these, uh, getting a bunch of Akkadian or Sumerian archers and having like five or six roll up. Um, they just got splash damage. The splash damage ties really nicely with the chariot. So you can like have a horse unit that sort of mops things up, get everything down really low, and then that horse unit routes them all. Um, really, really a terrifying unit. Um, downside of the unit is you'll notice here it takes 150 wood for the strict six strength one and 200 wood uh, for the eight strength one and wood upkeep. Um, you've got two trading upkeep and four upkeep. That means if you don't have a lot of wood, it's going to be really, really hard. Uh, to produce many of these units because they take so much wood. You cannot support that with chopping. You're going to need lumber mills. And if your terrain doesn't have good lumber mills, you probably shouldn't be playing Babylon. Um, notice that's pretty map dependent as well. Uh, we'll look at maps a bit later. Um, but yeah, that's Babylon. For Carthage, um, Carthage is, is quite powerful, um, primarily for a couple of things. Uh, the 200 civics on new city founding is actually really nice. You're probably going to found nine, 10, 11 cities. Uh, so that's 2000 civics um, or so. That's that's a big chunk. Um, it's almost like having the pyramids. And of course, if you if you get pyramids and uh, Carthage, you're just gonna be swimming in civics and civics lets you do all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, the 10 gold per year per connected is kind of nice. Uh, the mercenaries from tribe is honestly its own sort of thing. You can do some pretty creative things. You can buy units from behind someone's lines and have them attack into them. You can almost entirely ignore your military early game and just buy tribal units and use them to fight your early wars. Just be aware that tribal units take um, training to upgrade, don't have any tech requirements, which means you can take a tribal unit to six strength if you have sufficient training, which can be very, very powerful in the early game when no one else has any tech that leads to a six strength unit. The downside is they can't be upgraded any higher than six strength. And um, if you're facing someone who has a champion's family, uh, or a steadfast leader, they do take extra 25% from, they are still tribal, so they suffer from steadfast, which, which is a pretty big drawback. Carthage, uh, unique units. The elephant is, is quite good. Um, the challenge with this is if you don't have any elephants on the map, it can be really hard to make use of the unique unit. Um, you'll just have to be able to produce in your rider seat and nowhere else because the riders get that free elephant, um, which is which is kind of a big problem. So you always want to keep an eye out for elephants. For example, this map has quite a lot of elephants. So Carthage, I think, is, is viable because we know we get at least one grab one elephant here, maybe grab one there, um, find a rider seat. So now we have three cities that produce our unique unit, which means we can realistically use our unique unit, uh, where if it's only one, it's, you're just not going to have enough production generally. Uh, they have a great selection of cities, Carthage does, with uh, riders, artisans, sorry, families, riders, artisans, and statesmen being my favorites. Um, just really powerful cities. Artisans have that amazing, like I'm, I'm in love with artisans, honestly. Um, they just, the siege units and the ship units starting with ingenuity, it's like, here, my units are 20% stronger than yours. Um, my onagers hit 20% harder. Um, it's it's just really nice. So Egypt, Egypt is a great civ. Um, they have a the first, they basically can guarantee themselves pyramids because they get 400 stone at the start. Um, the 40% from farm on river, pretty nice. Um, basically, if you build a couple river farms, you should be 
in raid shape, and then minus 25% cost for identical adjacent improvements. Nice little uh, savings as well. Um, they, I think they also have the best starting text in the game. I generally, for multiplayer, play with no starting text off, but you working stone cutting and labor force, which means you get um, slavery right away, which is amazing. Um, and then their families are quite solid with landowners, riders, and sages. Uh, and their unique unit is very good. Um, it is essentially a ranged chariot that can move around that does not have route. Um, and notably, they have four moves, so they move further than anyone else. Uh, and also, I believe, have um, quite a bit of fission. Five fission, I think. Six fission. Holy crap, yeah. Kushite cavalry just sees further um, than anyone else. And uh, that four move makes them the fastest unit in the game, so they can appear out of nowhere and come across the entire map um, very quickly. Very, very strong unit. You know, Egypt is a very, very, very solid sieve. Um, yeah. Greece. Greece is one of my two favorite sieves, probably second in my heart after Persia. Olympiad allows you to do some pretty amazing things. Uh, the two culture per city is really, really nice because all of your cities will always get culture, uh, which means they keep ticking up no matter what you do. You don't have to build anything. Of course, if you build anything, you'll build even more. But it's nice. And the 25% cost for settlers is really nice on maps where you're food constrained. Uh, arid plateau comes to mind where it's like where is food and look i, I have much i only need 75 for settler i'm in business um their families are also really great champions best military family in the game uh because of that seat that gets 25 percent uh steadfast is also really nice for clearing out barbarians and tribe tribals early artisans I've already raved about artisans in this video and then sages in case you want to have an inquiry pump or even patrons uh, if you want to found a patron's capital with greece and use money to buy olympiads um we just have patrons and use money to buy Olympiads anywhere. So to kind of have a second military family, if you will. Um, very, very good. Very good nation. And I've already raved about the unique unit in the Greece video. Um, the hoplite gives you a polearm unit that does not require going to pikemen, which means if like your opponent is playing Persia, it could be a very good idea to go Greece because you know they're going to be building a lot of horse units. So you want to have something that counters it. Um, Greek Greece is just very, very solid. Poppy, the new unit, or the new nation that was added um, in the expansion. So uh, all their cities get two extra civics, which is a very nice bonus. And then this one is kind of insanely strong. Every unit that the Hathi have can remove vegetation, and they also ignore hill movement costs. Um, so they just zoom over hills. This is huge because it means your workers do not need to chop. All your other units can chop for you. Uh, your scouts can chop. Um, word of the wise, if you are in a scout hiding in a forest next to the enemy, and you chop, um, you are no longer hiding in the forest. You are visible. Uh, so just be aware, do not chop forests if you want your house scout to stay hidden. Um, their unique unit is essentially a super chariot um, that has six strength, so you can sort of skip the horseman line, although you might want cataphracts if the game goes very long. Um, pretty solid family selection, riders, landowners, and patrons, uh, as well as traders. You can do fun things with like a patron capital and a scholar leader. Um, so that, that's the Hatti. Next, we've got Persia, uh, my favorite civilization in the game. 50% harvest production, which is nice if you're trying to execute a chariot rush, because uh, you can grab 15 culture from nearby culture, uh, and 75 gold from nearby gold. Minus 25% cost to ranged units, which works on their unique unit, and pastures give you half an order, in, uh, in which is just wonderful. You have 10 pastures, congrats, you have five extra orders for free, and it's always available. Uh, they have the best order economy in the game because they also have statesmen, uh, which give you even more orders, so you can get into a pretty awesome economic snowball. Um, Alton Cavalry is also the best unique unit in the game, I would argue. They are basically a super chariot that also is ranged and also has route. They're the only ranged route unit. It means you can have a swarm of like six or seven of them. They can all attack the same target because they're all ranged. Um, and then when it's about to die, the one close to it in melee can just attack and route and get another attack. And then if there's more counter, it's just... It, it, it's a terror, like they are so scary. Um, and because their counter is basically the pikeman, um, not going to kill a cat eight strength cataphract archer with a five strength spearman. Um, yeah, most folks do not have a great way to respond to cataphract archers. Um, so, yeah, Greece, Greece is a great counter pick to Persia, um, very historically realistic as well, um, because the uh, hoplite and phalangite does do a great job of stopping Persia. Last, but certainly not least, we have Rome. Arguably, in multiplayer, anytime you can have the chance to play Rome, you should just pick Rome. Um, 
Persia is probably also in that category, honestly. Uh, I know Rome and Persia are the two probably most commonly banned ones uh, in one-on-ones just because they're, they're, I think they are significantly stronger than the others. Rome is just insane on a small map. You can't really stop a Roman X-Men rush because they just have more training than you have, um, and there's not much you can do about it. Um, on a larger map, it's a little better because you have more time to react to Rome. The training bonus gets... I mean, it's not as overpowering as it is in the early game because you get other sources of training. You can build barracks and, and ranges. But like, I think, as I showed in the Rome video, their champion's capital, their champion seat is starting with 15 training and your city has eight. So they're just building units twice as fast as, as yours, uh, or at least 100, like 50% faster than your military, uh, military uh, seat if you don't have champions yourself. They're unique units, nothing to really write home about. Um, but their strength really is in that training. Um, one of the one of the strongest ones in the game. Persian Rome are probably the two strongest. Um, if I if I had to rate them, um, with Rome, I think slightly edging out Persia, but it, it it's close. All right, so let's take a look. Um, we've got map one. We are on seaside. Seaside is the default map for Old World. Very kind of classic map. Um, like meant to sort of represent a. Mediterranean. Uh, let's see, you got a good mix of territory. We'll look at some other maps in a bit. Um, but yeah, so seaside. So here, looking at this start, and I'll turn on show resources again. Um, we do notice we have some elephants. So Carthage, I think, is potentially in play here. I, I can safely found like an artisan capital here for Carthage. Um, and I know I have elephants in this. And then I can found my rider seat somewhere else. Um, so Carthage, very much in play. Um, you could found a sieve with a game potentially here uh, to get to take advantage of hunters. That be Syria, Babylon, or Persia have hunters. Um, there's horses nearby as well, so yeah, that that that's nice. Um, potentially good for Egypt and Persia, which have unique units that have horses, as well as Hatti, which also have unique units that have, that have horses that use horses. Um, yeah, so I mean. Here, very viable, I think, to found Carthage uh, with the near horses, potentially like anything that uses a unique unit with horses, Egypt, Hatti, Persia. And of course, always just found Rome by default. Um, there's really no wrong or right answer, I think, on founding. It's just whatever uh, strikes your fancy and whatever you think you would play. In terms of just making a choice, I would say because of the elephants, because there's you already see two elephants on the map, I would actually found Carthage here and likely can go artisans with it um, to grab those elephants and be able to produce my unique unit and then maybe find some ore and make my rider city seat there and then settle something else to grab these elephants as well. Back with Seaside Map 2. All right, um, here we have a ton of wheat and ore, uh, which to me leads me towards a land ownery sort of nation, um, would likely move north. Uh, just a quick little note, you do want to move before you pick your nation, because right now if you pick your nation, it automatically settles where that settler is. Uh, it's a little nuanced to keep in mind. Um, say I would probably found landowners here and buy a tile to grab that third wheat. So which landowner sieve would I found? You have a couple to choose from. You've got Rome, you've got Hatti, you've got Egypt. Um, those are the three landowner sieves. Um, So I think given this map, um, very viable to found, I think I would lean Rome here. There's there's no horses in our land over seat. So Egypt and Hatti, I don't think are as great because we don't have a choice for building horses in our capital. Uh, any building or unique unit in the capital with horses and with wheat, we don't want to found um, a rider capital. Uh, if there were horses nearby, I think Egypt or Hatti could be great choices. Um, but with this, I would, I would definitely found land on Rome um, and go with that there. Map three on seaside. Um, we got some horses. We got some landowners. Or sorry, crop resources. We got some wheat, all of which is just tantalizingly out of range. Um, probably would move one west to found. We also have some game out of range. Um, 
So given the ore and the wheat, so I, I think I would still found land over, uh, land owner here, largely because I want the ore and the horses to be in my tile laundries and landowners, the seat lets you buy tiles early on, earlier than anything else. Um, potentially, uh, I mean, there's no arid tiles here, so I don't see any arid tiles. So I don't know that I can like rush pyramids as I could with Egypt. Uh, so this might be a nice hottie start. There's a lot of forests as well. Um, and yeah, so let's, I would found hottie landowners here um, and then buy tiles to grab that ore later and to grab that horse so I can produce. You can, and look, there's another wheat that we can grab with our, our super, super powered land owner, loaner, and landowner capital city that can just buy tiles. Fab four, still on seaside. Um, we have some ore, we have some sheep. Uh, we can move over and grab some horses. Can't really grab anything else. Um, so, yeah, ore and horses. Um, might be ore and horses and some sheep. So, we are playing with techs. We probably want something with husbandry, uh, like Persia <laughs> or Hati, um, because we want to, this is our only source of food. If we're playing with no starting techs, it doesn't matter. We just don't have, so I'll presume we're playing with starting decks on. Um, husbandry is definitely a consideration. Um, and then, yeah, it's I think it's really your preference between Hati and Persia. Um, slight preference here, I think, for Hati, because landowners are a little stronger, as I found here, than, um, than Persia's choice of hunters. Uh, there's no hunter resource. So not much point in founding hunters at the same time as Persia. You don't want to found, found riders because there's horses. Um, so the rider seat always gets horses for free. So I would also found Ati here with uh, landowners, despite there not being any uh, landowner resources. The fact that I can buy tiles um, as land for the landowner capital, it's actually really, really nice. Um, and the ore and horses uh, is, is quite great. I should note that generally, when I'm trying to figure out what civilization or what nation I'm founding with, I'm actually mostly looking at the families that the founding site works for, and then I sort of pick the nation out of the ones that are eligible for the families. Um, starting texts like husbandry also do play a role. Um, so this this is a particularly meh start. It doesn't really have anything special. So, or some horses and sheep, but there's no real great food resource that points you in a particular direction like landowners or hunters. Um, so that's part of the reason I went with Hati landowner because I, I, I've wanted that uh, husbandry from so that I can use the sheep right away with starting text on. Um, I wanted to be able to produce my horses in my capital uh, for my unique unit and the landowner is is nice. Uh, it's, it's a better option than the Persian hunters because there's no benefit to hunters. With landowners at least I can buy tiles uh, in my capital and grab a bunch of stuff. Like I could buy these two tiles, grab these two, uh, probably, probably not going to bother buying the gems. Might be worth buying the barley, for example. Could be worth buying the goats. You could kind of buy tiles in a fun way to do it and then maybe put a shrine in the right spot. So yeah. Map five, also on seaside. Um, some gems and ore and maybe some wine. Um, kind of a sad start, honestly. There's no food resources. A lot of river forests. So one, two, three, four. Um, Four river forest, which is quite nice. Um, some ore, but no real special resource. Um, we are on seaside. This could be a good good site for someone with, um, and we've got some gems for, yeah. So I think I'm feeling artisans here because we don't have any food resources. So we're not leaning towards landowner or uh, hunter. You could argue founding landowner here and grabbing that sorghum, but mm, sorghum is, not that great because it's on an arid tile and like there's nothing else that screams landowner about this start i mean you can again everything is viable it's just a question of what 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 is what is better um yeah i think i would potentially i'd like getting the wine. i mean getting the wine in borders is this nice plus one culture every turn uh, you can also harvest the wine for 10 but that takes orders um so i don't see a way to grab the goats so i would probably move down here and then pick a nation that has artisans. Conveniently, there are three nations that have artisans, Babylon, Carthage, and Greece. I um, could potentially go, so I, I don't think I would go Carthage here. Uh, there's no elephants, so we can eliminate Carthage. 
a, a founding riders here doesn't really make sense. It's not particularly great. We don't know if there's any elephants on the map, so we don't want to be in a situation where our rider capital is the only source of elephants that Carthage ever gets. So probably not founding Carthage. Greece or Babylon, I think both are pretty viable. Um, this could be a solid champion site, but it really does scream artisans with those four river forests um, and the gem mine and the ore mine, potentially all of which benefit from artisans. Uh, the fact that we're going to have like nine, so with, with these being artisan lumber mills, that's 36 wood production just from those four lumber mills. Very, very good. Might be able to support um, the so the Babylonian eunuch unit. Um, we know we're on seaside, so it's not like forest is not going to be plentiful. Um, yeah, I think it's really to taste in terms of whether you prefer Babylon or Greece here. Let's just do Babylon uh, for illustrative purposes. Uh, it is really just an artisan founding spot here. We're still on pick later, but we're going to change our map script from seaside to arid plateau. Arid plateau uh, is one of the maps that you'll see a lot in uh, multiplayer along with Coastal Rain Basin, default multiplayer map. Uh, so I'm going to cover settling sites on these two as well. You can, of course, play for any of these, uh, but these two maps, I think, are, are special enough that I want to cover them, uh, particularly Arid Plateau specifically. So map six, which is on Arid Plateau. A couple things about Arid Plateau. It's an Arid Plateau, which means there's not a lot of food and not a lot of forests, and it's really hilly. So those three things, no food or not much food, not many forests and hilly should lead you away from certain civilizations. Specifically, it should lead you away from Babylon. You're not going to have enough, um, simply, you're just simply not going to have enough uh, wood to support your unique unit largely. It should likely lead you away from Persia, uh, any, any horse based unit, uh, because you're not going to have that nice bonus for attacking on flat ground because there's a lot of hill. It should lead you towards unique units that use iron, um, particularly because you're going to have a lot of hills, so you can support particularly heavy iron economy. And yeah, so let's take a look here. Um, kind of a meh starting location. We do have some ore just out of range, um, that we might be able to grab later, but uh, we just really have goats sheep, goats. So uh, kind of not great. Um, maybe we grab that fur. Um, so you could argue this is a okay Persia hunter site. It's not great. Persia on this map is okay. It's, I mean, Persia is always great, but like it, it's not as great as it is on a map without as many hills. Um, same is true for Hati. Um, so I think I would probably personally lean, um, yeah, you could, you could do Persia hunter, but like, that's not a food resource. That's a culture resource, which isn't that compelling. I think the Hati landowner here could be particularly strong as well, because you can grab that ore and grab that wheat for your landowner city, although there's no horses. So not that great. Um, looking at other landowner starts, Rome might be very powerful here. Um, Egypt also, except for you don't have the horse. So I think I would actually go Rome landowners here and try to grab that wheat and grab that ore um, and, and start from there um, and use the wheat to sort of fuel our food. Uh, Rome doesn't start with husbandry, but I don't think the two husbandry sieves uh, of Hati and Persia were particularly compelling on this map. Map 7, also on Arid Plateau. So this one's interesting. We have two landowner resources and horses. To me, that uh, calls Hati or Egypt. I think I'm leaning slightly Egypt because we also have a bunch of arid tiles, which means we can guarantee pyramids and be able to build them. So I would go land owner Egypt here. We got horses so we can build uh, our unique unit in our capital. Um, we have stone so that we can uh, build uh, the pyramids if we desire to. Uh, we'll want to improve these wheat. Uh, seems like a pretty solid land owner Egypt start. A lot of sheep and not much else, some goats. So given that, um, um, 
So what I'm looking at here is what the unique unit actually costs. So the unique unit here for Hati takes wood and food and has food upkeep. The unique unit for Persia takes uh, iron and food uh, and takes iron upkeep. Slightly leads me towards Persia here. Um, it's actually a rider family start. I want to be able to take advantage of husbandry. Um, as I'm assuming we're playing with starting techs, for example. Um, otherwise, this is a very, very sad start without starting techs. Um, so, yeah, um, very, very much leaning towards Persia here because uh, I'm going to have three pastures up and running very nicely, which will give me four pastures actually up and running very quickly, which will give me four extra orders. And this would actually be, um, sorry, three, two extra orders. It's half an order. Um, this would actually be a great rider start. Um, not, I mean, it'd be perfect with some ore, but there's no horses. So, um, yeah, and the horses are a little far away there. I'm going to go Persia with a rider start here. Um, lets me double scout, lets me figure out what the heck is going on in this map. Um, seems like a great, great start for uh, rider Persia, largely on the basis of these four, four pastures that I'd like to use. So that's a lot of sorghum. Um, which is leading me towards landowners again. Um, and a little bit of sheep and not much else. Um, can we grab three sorghum in any way, shape, or form? It does not look like it, so it's really a preference. Um, there's also one, two, three, four river forests, maybe five river forests, six river Okay, so artisans is actually super viable here as well, because um, if we move up here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six river forests, which is insanely good. Um, it's a lot of river forests. And we have some growth, so sorghum. Uh, we don't necessarily need to go land our, uh, This is Arid Plateau, so I would definitely, definitely avoid Babylon, uh, just because you're going to have issues with your uh, wood production. Uh, like, even like four river forests in Arid Plateau is kind of insanely huge. Um, so I would look towards another civilization that has artisans, uh, probably Greece. Um, be a nice, nice found for Greece here with uh, an artisan cap for Greece. Uh, we can get those river forests up and running, and we can get some sorghum. Uh, but you could, you could also go with landowners here um, and, and do a landowner sieve. I'm just trying to mix it up. There, this seems like, I mean, especially six river forests on arid plateau where you don't usually have a lot of wood production um, it is really compelling. Map 10 on arid plateau. Um, this seems pretty compelling as a hunter start. Uh, we have two fur, some game, three fur actually. Um, some game, some sorghum. Also viable as landowner uh, with the two sorghum. Um, yeah, there's no horses. Uh, which maybe leads us away from a uh, hunter-rider start, so probably not Persia. Um, you could go with Syria here, for example, get a nice little uh, hunter start with Assyria. Very, very viable. Uh, Babylon um, could work as well, uh, although I'm, I'm really hesitant to play Babylon on maps with uh, limited wood, like Arid Plateau, one, two, three four five river forests you could also do artisan a lot of a lot of uh viability i think for the yeah I, I i think i kind of like the idea of like a a serious start here we got some game we've got some sorghum um probably settling up here no. yeah let's uh let's say a Syria hunter start all right now we're gonna change our map script again. We're gonna look at coastal rain basin. All right, we're on coastal rain basin. The thing to know uh, for coastal rain basin is generally the map is gonna have a coast, <laughs> hence the name, on one side and then mountains on another side. Um, so you're kind of torn on this map between settling towards the coast or settling towards mountains. Um, that, I think, is a longer-term consideration, but let's just look at some founding sites here. I think the map is pretty reasonably balanced in terms of what sort of sites are available to you. Um, it's less skewed than Arid Plateau, for example, which is very, very uh, food-constrained uh, and has plenty of hills. So here we've got three landowner resources, which uh, on map 11 here, 
which leads me again to pick some sort of landowner sieve. Our landowner sieves, of course, are Rome, as always, Egypt, and uh, the Hittites, or the Hatti, sorry, I keep calling them by their old name. Um, we have some fur, we have some elephants. Just judging by the lack of any sort of horse unit, um, probably leaning a Rome landowner start here. Um, seems like a pretty solid, pretty solid start for Rome. Uh, yeah, I have twelve. Lots of fur, some horses, some game. Uh, the game is just out of reach. Some salt. Um, yeah, I mean, I think judging by the horses and the fur, I feel like that game is grabbable uh, in some way. Probably settling north to grab horses fur, yeah. Leaning heavily here towards a hunter civilization. So Syria, Babylon, Persia. Um, this feels like a hunter start. There are horses, which I think would make me pick Persia, Hunter, Start. Up 13, we have some ore and a bunch of resources out of reach. Uh, some gold and some salt. Probably would move one north here to settle on the salt and the ore. We have a bunch of river forests, one, two, three, four. Uh, and both of those are pretty good. Um, have salt as well, um, which is particularly nice um, for the culture and the money, and the ore is pretty good. River forests make me lean towards a family that, or lean towards artisan, um, especially since we could potentially like keep stretching out. There's tons of river forests here. Coastal Rain Basin does have a lot of trees, so Babylon is very viable. You should have enough wood, wood production. Um, so I could see like an artisan Babylon start here. Could also see an artisan Greek start here. Um, really, even I mean, wouldn't do an artisan Carthid start because I don't see any elephants. Um, but really, could could go with Babylon or Greece. I think both of them are very viable with this position. Um, just pick Greece arbitrarily here. Map fourteen. Uh, some horses, some sheep, some pastures. Uh, some fur, this basically some elephants. Uh, this very much screams a hunter start to me, and probably a Persia start, especially with all the sheep and the horses. Uh, so, Persia hunters here. Um, seems pretty viable. You could also argue for Carthage start as well, alternatively. Um, you do have those elephants there. Um, I think as Frederick pointed out, elephants are camp, so they actually benefit from hunters as well, because they get doubled by hunters, because hunters increase all camp resources by 100%. Um, if you wanted to do Carthage, I think you would settle largely the same spot um, here. Uh, I wouldn't settle riders for sure, so probably an artisan Carthage start. Um, but it's not really great artisan terrain, so I, I think I would stick with my initial pick um, of Persia Hunters here. Map 15, we've got a ton of landowner resources, crop resources, um, some ore, and some goats. So leaning here towards a landowner sieve, hard to pass up three sorghum. Uh, the ore is also very, very nice. Rome, always a great selection, I think. Um, could also do Hatti, but I think the lack of a horse resource limits that. Same with Egypt, uh, although this, the sand um, is potentially interesting for Egypt with Arid. Um, but the lack of horses in the capital, I think, would lead me to go Rome landowners here. Um, cool. Uh, 